Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Mr. 3D. I hope you're doing well. So in this video, we will be making this stylized hexagon sphere inside of Blender with geometry nodes. So stick around till the end of this video to learn how to make this. You can also download finished project file for a few bucks from my Gumroad store. The link is in the description. So without wasting any more time, let's jump straight into the tutorial. Open up Blender. I'm using Blender version 3.1 for this tutorial. Click anywhere to get rid of slash screen. I also enabled screencast keys so you can see what keys I'm pressing. Now select the light and press delete on your keyboard to delete it. Select cube from your viewport then drag your timeline editor all the way up here and change it to geometry nodes editor from here. You can click on new to add a new geometry nodes modifier or you can go to modifiers tab and add a geometry nodes modifier. So if you add a second modifier you can see that all the nodes disappear. That's because geometry nodes modifier is not selected. You can see the selected modifier is highlighted. Click back to geometry nodes modifier for you to be able to view your nodes in the editor. You can also pin the editor then you can select anything the nodes will remain visible to you. Next delete group input cause it shows the object to which we have the modifier on. We are gonna replace it with icosphere. Press shift A, search for icosphere, connect it with the group output. You can see that cube is replaced with icosphere. Right now it's low poly so increase the subdivisions to 4 for now. You can see that these are triangles but we need hexagons. So press shift A, search for dual mesh node, place it here. Now that we have hexagons, next we have to split all the edges. What we are gonna do is to make it so that each face is scaling down but if they are all connected, then they won't scale separately from each other. So we need to split the edges. To do that, add split edges node. When you put it on, it will not visually change anything but actually all of them are separated because they are all at the same place. That's why we can't see any change. Also add a set position node here to control the scale of the faces. Next we need to find the position of each face. We can add a capture attribute node right here, change the data type from float to vector because float is just one value and vector is three different values x, y and z. And we have to convert these values to position. So add a position node, click on the position node then search for mix RGB. Connect attribute of capture attribute with color 2 of mix RGB. Take the position of the position and connect it with color 1 of the mix RGB. We can now control the scale with the factor slider. What's cool about this is we can connect textures into the factor. What I'm gonna do now is press shift A, search for noise texture, plug it into the factor. It's a little bit hard to see what's going on. There are different ways you can control this. You can use color ramp. But in this tutorial, I'm gonna use map range node. Now I will put these two values closer together. So 0.6 for the minimum and 0.5 for the maximum. This is little hard to see until we increase the subdivisions to 6. Here you can see all the non-scaled faces are connected together. We don't want that. We want a bit space between them. So I'm gonna change to minimum to about 0.5. And as you can see that they are not connected now. And there you can also see some scaled down faces are glitching. So to fix this, change to max value to 0.99. That's gonna fix it. Make sure to change the noise texture detail to 0, roughness to 0 and distortion to 0 also. Without these changes it will look weird. Change the dimensions from 3D to 4D. This W will help us make looping animation later in this video. Turn the scale down to 2, now you can actually see these big empty areas we have going on here. Now go ahead and add a set material node right next to set position node. Then go over to shader editor, select it and give it a new material. Rename it to hexagon. Go back to geometry nodes editor and assign hexagon material to set material node. Without this process you won't be able to see the material. Back to shader editor to start shading. Go to render properties tab, change the render engine to cycles. Make sure your device is set to GPU, of course if you have one. Now back to shading, zoom in a little, press shift A, search for color ramp, place it here. Plug the color into the base of the principal PSDF. On color ramp, click on the plus icon to add a new color stop. 
and change it to whatever color you want. I'm gonna go with blue then change the black position to whatever you like. For me I like sky blue and for the white once again any color you want. I would like to use pink. With that being done we can't see any changes so plug the color into emission of the principal BSDF. Increase emission strength just a bit. You can see that it's glowing but we are not done yet. Now go over to edit preferences under add-ons. Search for node Wrangler, hit that check mark right next to it and you're good to go. Select color M and press Ctrl T. It's gonna add mapping and texture coordinate. Change coordinates from object to generated. And as you can see that we have this gradient going on. You can also play around with color ramp. Hover over to viewport, press numpad 3 on your keyboard to go to right orthographic camera view. Select your camera from the outliner and press Ctrl Alt zero to snap the camera to view. While the camera is selected, press G and click the middle mouse button once and drag a bit to zoom in or out. To confirm this action, just click left mouse button. Now that we have set our camera, from here change the resolution to 1920 by 1920. Zoom in a little more. Now we are gonna start making looping animation. Drag the bottom window all the way up here and change the editor type to geometry nodes. Zoom in just so we can see clearly. Select noise texture, move it over here. Right click at the top edge of the window, then click on horizontal split. Change the editor type to timeline. Set start frame to 0 and end frame to 120. We will use W to make it loop. I came to know about this looping method from Joey Carlino. He makes awesome blender geometry notes tutorial on YouTube. Select noise texture, press shift D to duplicate it. Move it here and make sure both textures have the same settings, otherwise it won't loop. Drag the factor here, search for mix RGB, take the color, plug it in the value, also put noise factor to color 1 and do the same with the other one. So this is a bit of a weird setup but it is what it takes to loop this. So slide the factor to 0, make sure you are on frame 0, right click insert keyframe. On noise texture change W to 0, hit I on your keyboard, it's gonna add a keyframe on current value. On second noise texture change W to 2. The larger the number, the faster the animation is going to be. So you really have to figure out how fast you want it to be. Go to the end of your timeline, change this W to 0, press I to insert keyframe. On the other one, change it from 0 to negative 2, hit I to insert keyframe. Also drag the factor value all the way to 1, then press I to insert a keyframe. It still does not loop. So to fix this, just flip mix RGB input color socket like this. It will lag a bit but you can lower subdivisions to make it smooth. That's pretty much it. That's how you make this stylized hexagon sphere but we need to actually make it look cool with some ground reflections. So press shift A, add a plane, press G, Z, move it down a little, scale it up. Go over to camera view by pressing numpad 0 on your keyboard. Change the editor type to shader editor. Hit new, rename it to ground. Press shift A, search for color ramp. Place it here, add a noise texture, plug it into the factor, plug the color into the roughness of the principal PSDF. Use color ramp sliders to control the effect of roughness, also make it metallic. Play around with the sliders until you get what you want. Increase detail and roughness of the noise texture to here. Play around until you get what you want. Now that we have done everything, head over to output properties tab. Change output file location to whatever you want, then change the file format to FFmpeg video. Under encoding, change container to MPEG4. Quality to perceptually lossless. And finally go to render, click render animation. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, then you will probably really enjoy this video. So if you click on the screen right now, you can go and watch that. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.